Okay, so we are doing the uh, portion of Juz number two, Ruku number one, which is verses 142 through 147. Okay, so the homework for everybody before we go move forward is that you're going to review and complete any of the missing words, recite and reflect of what we studied today. Okay, and reflect on what I said also about the word meaning and let me know. Uh, obviously strategize and act and then remember that we will start with the sharing next week okay so please you know come thinking about that as to what do you want to share leave something of good with others every day because you will need it at some point okay especially on the day of judgment so remember that so here is a question to everybody if you remember only one thing from this class, just one thing, what would that be? Raise your hand and say it. Okay. Raise your hand and tell me if there is one thing that you would remember from this class. What would that be? Five rights of Quran. Okay. Others. Does that mean you don't remember anything? But give me one thing. That's that's a that's a very generic statement. Give me one thing, something specific that you would remember. A dua. A dua? Which dua? <laughs> okay, the others, the others who are laughing, who've not said anything. What would you remember? Tell me one thing that you would remember from this class. Okay. Okay. So reflect on it also next time. Because again, the point here is, is that we need to take advantage of the time that we are spending. Right? Are you getting any benefit out of this or not is the question. So, Hopefully there is something that you would remember, right? Once we are done with this. That's the point of asking is, what would you remember? Because typically, you know, what happens is that you go to all of these lectures and then people come out of it and you ask some somebody 30 minutes later, so what do you remember? And they're like, you know, just looking like a deer in headlights. You know, they, don't, they don't remember anything or hardly anything, right? And we don't want to be like that. So again, let's move forward. So remember, Lahama kasabat. Which means they shall receive the reward of what they earn, right? So everybody gets the reward of the deeds that you do. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, you leave your imprint behind, right? So make sure that you are leaving something of goodness behind versus something that you are doing that somebody else adopts, which is not nice. Because if you get the benefit of some doing something good, you also get the opposite as well. If you do something bad and somebody else follows that and copies you of doing those things, you get the, the negative rewards, right? Uh, of that, the non Satakai Jariya, hopefully, right? Not the Satakai Jariya of Khair. Okay. So this is, and we'll do an experiment at some point, okay? But this is what we need to remember. This is where all of us are going, right? With what you are going to collect in your life as good deeds is what is going to go with you over there, right? No Fortnite, no Nintendos, no Playstations, not your phone, you know? That's not gonna go there. Even if you take it there, you can't charge it. It's gonna die in like a few hours, right? So won't be of any use, right? So your good deeds are the th things that are going to go with you, okay? And, and and your you know the you know what is it called the uh, like the portable charger thing is not going to work either you know so they, the airports I mean huh? the not the airports you can you charge the airports right okay so we start with the dua a'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem bismillah rahman rahim allahumma arina al haqqa haqqan warzuqna ittiba'a wa arina al batila batila warzuqna ittinaba 
Okay, O oh Allah, show us the truth as truth and give us the ability to follow it and show us falsehood as falsehood and give us the ability to avoid it. Okay, so again, for the ones who are starting with us today, the space on the side of your page is for you to take notes. Okay, so keep pointers with you, take some notes as we are going through it, inshallah. So the first verse starts with Sayakulu Sufahau Minan Nas. The fools, pagans, hypocrites, and Jews among the people will say. Now, before this ayah came, right, the Muslims, they were doing many things similar to the Jews, right? They were fasting, they were praying, they were praying towards Jerusalem, right? Before before you know the ayahs came where they had to change the direction. So they were doing many things which were similar, right? Now, the Jews, they basically were upset about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam coming in and praying and, and you know, preaching uh, Islam. But they said he is still doing many things that we are doing, right? So they were not really that upset. I mean, they were upset, but not that upset, right? Because they said, okay, you know, it'll, it's probably like another thing. It's going to go away. So what happened was, is that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala here is sending a direct message, right, to the Jews. And what is being said? مَا وَاللَّهُمْ عَنْ قِبْلَتِهِمُ الَّذِي كَانُوا عَلَيْهَا Which means what has turned them, Muslims, from their Qibla, which is the prayer direction towards Jerusalem, to which they used to face in prayer. Who is saying that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying it? Who is saying it? The Jews, right? The Jews of the time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing them. Now see what happens is that if somebody tells you something, right, and you know he is he is telling you like and giving you any information, and you basically say, "Oh, he's a fool. Don't listen to him," right? This is how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is addressing the Jews. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying it's the fools who are saying that. And what are they saying? What has happened to these Muslims? They used to pray towards Jerusalem. What has made them turn their qibla? Now, what happened with this was that a capital of any country is very important for that country, right? Whatever the capital is. And the capital at that time for the Jews was Jerusalem. So till nothing happened to that, Muslims were praying in that direction, they were cool with that, right? I mean, they were not upset about other things, but they were, you know, say that they were still praying towards that. Now, when this ayah came, right, about the changing in the direction of Qibla, the Jews, they really got upset and they really got offended. That now what has happened and now they're saying to the Muslims, what happened to you guys? You used to pray over there. Your religion is not stable. I mean, you guys are praying in one direction today. You're praying in a different direction tomorrow. And they said, started saying these words and some of the weak Muslims, it impacted them, right? Because they were saying, they started thinking, yeah, you know, they're right. I mean, if they're saying that, you know, we're changing directions, we thought this religion was stable religion, right? Why are we changing directions now? But the point here is, is that a couple of points. One thing is, is that if the Jews that truly believed that he is not the true messenger, they would have not been upset about it. Them being upset that the Muslims are now changing direction because they, they could care less. I mean, they're not following Judaism. So the Jews could care less, right? Where they, where somebody's praying. But they knew at the bottom of their heart that this is the final message, right? That's why they were getting upset of why is he changing direction now, right? Why is he, you know, because Jerusalem was, was their capital. Now, what happened was, is that when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in Mecca, right? What, what did he used to do? He obviously was praying towards Jerusalem, but he loved the Kaaba. So what he used to do was he used to pray in a direction so the Kaaba could be in front of him and he was also facing Jerusalem. How did that happen? Let me show this to you. So if you take a look at this picture, if you are in Makkah, you can be facing Jerusalem and you can obviously be in front of Kaaba, right? You can be in, in a direction in Kaaba where Kaaba is in front of you and you can also be facing Jerusalem. And that's how Rasul Sallallahu was praying at the time. Now, when they came to Medina, now, when you are in Medina, obviously Medina is right here. Now, you can either pray towards Jerusalem or you can pray towards Makkah, but you cannot pray towards both. It has to be in either direction. And this is what happened is that 
when the ayah came about changing in the direction, first the Muslims were praying in, in the direction of Jerusalem. But then when the ayah came, they changed their direction and they started facing Mecca. Right? And that is where the Jews got upset. And that is where it became more prominent that the direction has changed. And that is also what became prominent is that now is the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is differentiating between the Jews clearly and the Muslims. They are no longer similar nations. Right? So that was completely changed. Now, the Jews obviously became furious when that happened. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the verse continues, Now, this is a deep statement. What is Allah Ta'ala saying? Allah is saying, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say to them, say to who? The Jews, the, you know, the, the Mushrikeens, but specifically the Jews of the time in Medina, that to Allah belongs East and the West. Allah can say, pray in this direction. And if you are a true believer, a true follower of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you will do whatever Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says without asking why. You will not ask why this and why not that. If Allah is saying something, you do it. Now, a couple of things. One thing is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is establishing the direction of prayer. He can guide whoever he wants. The second thing is, is that Jews believe that the straight path could only be for the people who are amongst them. That they were the only ones on the straight path, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically saying that Allah is the true owner of who he gives guidance because it says, Yahdi man yasha'u ila siratin mustaqim. He guides whom he wills to a straight way or to a straight path. The third thing is, is that Qibla at that time was in control of who? Kaaba was in control of who? Of the Quraysh. Quraysh were mushrikeens, right? They were non believers. Well, I mean, they were believers in a sense, but they were mushrikeens. They were not Jews, they were not Christians, they were mushrikeens. Now, when this ayah came, that now you have to face Makkah, there were idols in Makkah at the time, right? There were over 360 idols. Uh, now, when this ayah means that now Makkah has to be cleaned of all those idols, right? This is a clear statement because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying change direction, uh, move your faces towards Qibla when you're praying, it means all the idols have to go. Now, Makkah at that time then became the focus. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the, Mu the Muslims at the time, now the time has come that Makkah needs to be cleaned of all those idols and of all the gods. Of, of all the gods. Now, Rasul sallallahu used to fast, as I said before, on the same days that the Jews used to fast. When this ayah came, there was also ayahs that came down about Ramadan, right? That now the month of fasting is going to be different for the Muslims. They will not fast and that became the obligatory fast. Right? There were other days that you can fast like Mondays and Thursdays, um, you know, 13th, 14th and 15th of, of, a, uh, of a lunar month. Those are optional fasts that you can do. Those are not mandatory. But the mandatory fast, the month of fasting, Ramadan became a completely separate month. Ihdina Sirat al when do we say that? Surah Fatiha, how many times do we say it in a month, in, 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 a, in a day? 17. At least 17 times a day, right? And if we understand what we are saying, we are asking Subhana, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guide us to the straight path, right? And that is why it's important for us to be able to understand what is it that we are saying. Verse number 143, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa ummatan wasata. Thus we have made you which is the true Muslims. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now addressing the believers, the Muslims, true followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his sunnah, a wasat, wasat means just or middle, and the best nation, right? Ummah means nation. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inaugurating a new nation with this, with this ayah. Do you folks know this ayah is right in the middle of Surah Baqarah? This yeah. is verse number 143, right? So, Surah so Baqarah has 286 verses. This is, this is wasat means middle. And this ayah came as ayah number 143 of Surah Baqarah, right? Which is right in the middle. Now, middle obviously is a two, is a path between two different extremes, right? On one side, the extreme, what was the extremity? Christians were, they were religious, right? They were very spiritual. 
they were so spiritual that they had raised the status of Jesus, you know, to a status alongside Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They raised him so high. They were so spiritual. Jews on the other side were intellectual. They used to argue based on intellect, right? They used to agree, yes, you know, things have changed and you know, all that stuff has happened, but they used to argue based on in, uh, on intellectual things. What Islam has done is Islam has combined both the things, right? The, the spiritual with the intellectual. Now, what happens is, is that, and that is why it's important that as a Muslim, we have a balance between our private lives and our community lives. You know, one should not take precedence over the other. Okay? It should not be that we forgive our community life or our private life and vice versa. Now, prayer is one of the most personal things. Right? You pray, but the most beneficial prayer or the most rewarding prayer is when you're praying in Jama. When you go to Masjid, that is 27 times more rewarding than when you're praying at home. Similarly, when you go for Hajj, Hajj is a kind of a prayer. Prayers are typically very personal. Religion is typically very personal. But when you do Hajj, you are with all these millions of people. You're doing Hajj together. It becomes a very community thing. You should not be arguing. You should not be doing many other things when you're in Hajj, right? So now Islam combines both these things, private and the collective life. Now Fatiha says the same thing. When we are saying Fatiha, what's the last part of Fatiha? We are talking about two different types you know, of punishments that people you know, got, the Jews and the Christians. So Quran is basically very spiritual. You will cry if you understand the meaning of Quran when you are reciting the Quran. Right? Similarly, on the other side, Quran is very intellectual. People have spent their lives studying the verses of the Quran. There are libraries, libraries of books that are just on Quran. Right? And people spend their entire lifetime and still they think they've only just scratched the surface of the meaning of Quran. Right? So Quran is both very intellectual and very spiritual. Um, Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to point on this is, is that we need to learn and to act on it, right? Knowledge is not of any benefit if you're not acting on it. And acting without knowledge is of not no benefit either because you then just start doing things that may not be the right things. So knowledge and action has to come together. Okay, verse number 143 continues. alaykum <laughs> shahida. That you be witness over mankind and the messenger Muhammad Sallallahu be a witness over you. So what does this mean? What is our responsibility? One thing is, is that all of you being a part of the middle nation, you will be called as witness over other nations. Right? You will be witnesses over mankind. What does that mean? Is that we are the ones that are the balanced nation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us the balanced nation so others can look at us and know what a balanced nation looks like. If you act in a way that is not balanced, that your neighbors see and that people around you see, right? You will be questioned over that, right? And when it says that you will be called as a witness, which means that you have a responsibility to keep up that balanced act wherever you are. What does it mean by Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi be a witness over you? What this means is, is that Allah, uh, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is going to be calling Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be a witness upon us that did we do the job right? Did we show to other people what a balanced nation looks like? Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to be a witness over on each and every one of us, right? And he is going to testify. Uh, did we do our things properly? Did we do what he communicated to us or not? Right? So we will be questioned about all those things. Now, also know that Rasul Sallallahu when he conquered Makkah, right, as part of his last khutbah, what was the things that he asked the people? He was asking people, did I deliver the message? Right? And the people testified, yes, you did deliver the message. So he has done his job. Question is, when we will be asked on the day of judgment, did we deliver the message to all these other people? Because Prophet is not coming back at this point, right? So we are the ones who are going to deliver the message. Are we doing our job? 
there is many things that are coming up there is a decatur book festival that's going to come up in the next couple of weeks which is a good opportunity there is gunnet county fair that's going to come up there are other opportunities that come up in school right of you acting in a way that you are really showing the values of a muslim are you doing that is the question are you displaying those values or are you just like any other kid you know who does who does is a non believer just acting in the same way that they are acting right wearing torn clothes talking foul language doing all those things are you like that that's a question that each one of us has to answer for our own selves so and kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat lin nas you are the best nation based an example for mankind right this is again from surah ali imran um verse 143 continues wa ma ja'alnal qibla allati kunta alayha and we made the qibla the prayer direction towards jerusalem which you used to face now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now addressing the jews right saying that we made that as a qibla that they used to face only to test those who followed the messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from those who would turn on their heels may yattabi'ur rasula who followed the messenger mim may yanqalibu ala aqibai which means from those who would turn on their heels question is some people used to ask you know why are we changing direction allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has answered this question that the direction was changed just to test people are they still going to say oh you know we used to face jerusalem why are we changing direction or are they just going to follow what what they were being told and asked to do which was to change the direction you know there were many sahabas who were praying and there was a sahabi that came and who said oh you know this aya verse has come that the direction has to change and they were in salah and they changed their direction in salah and we the map that we saw you had to turn almost 180 degrees to change direction right jerusalem is in one direction makkah is in the other direction but they changed their direction in salah which means they did not used to they did not used to wait that oh you know we have to go through something and we have to think about it and investigate and only then we will change right they just changed their direction as soon as they heard it So qibla change is a symbol of unity and identity right qibla is just a symbol right if somebody says do you pray to the qibla you only pray to the qibla because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked you to pray to qibla right if allah so if another mess, messenger was supposed to come which we know is not going to come and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to change the direction again which we know is not going to change right then we would have followed that because we do what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to do Verse one forty three continues when Kanat la kabiratan illa ala lazina hadalwa. Indeed, it was great, heavy, except for those whom Allah guided. Which means it was not physically difficult. You just had to change the direction. What was difficult was psychologically, emotionally, to come over the fact that we were praying in one direction. Now we are changing the direction completely. So that is what was difficult. So we need to be asking this dua. frequently which is allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wat-tuqa wal-afafa wal-ghina wa la indeed i ask you for guidance allah consciousness which means being fearful of allah chastity and contentment so try to remember this dua and try to ask this dua for each and every one of your own self because whatever dua you ask for yourself remember a dua is never rejected it's always accepted right Verse one forty three continues: "Wa ma kana Allahu li yudia imanakum, and Allah would never make your faith prayers to be lost." Why did Allah Subhanahu wa Taala say that? Because many Jews at the time were saying, "Oh, you know what? Now that you've changed direction, you were praying towards Jerusalem. All those prayers they will not count anymore, because now you're changed direction. You were praying in the wrong direction to begin with." And many Muslims started believing that, right? So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent this ayah saying that whatever you pray. Previously, that is not going to be lost. You will be rewarded for that. In the Allah bin Nasi la Rahu for Rahim. Truly, Allah is full of kindness, the most merciful towards mankind. Verse one forty four of Surah Baqarah then says, "Qad nara taqal luba wajhika fi sama." We have certainly seen the turning of your face, O Muhammad, towards the heaven. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Fala nawali yana ka kibla ta tarzaha. and we will surely turn you to a qibla with which you will be pleased qawli wajhaka wajhaka shatr al masjid al haram so turn your face toward masjid al haram 
Now this verse, this verse highlights the um, the relationship that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi right? Wasallam. So what was Rasul Sallallahu doing? What he was doing was he was, you know, when you go outside and you know sometimes when you go home from school and your mom maybe looks at you and she says, "What's up? What happened?" And you say, "You oh, know, nothing happened." It's all right. And she says, no, I know something happened. What happened? Right? She can know from your face something has happened that was not okay. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was lo- knew that Rasul sallam, when he used to go outside and used to pray towards Jerusalem, his heart was still with Makkah. His heart was towards Makkah. So he used to look up, raise his eyes, just look up towards the sky. He never complained. But he used to look up towards the sky and then look down. He used to look up towards the sky and then look down. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying is that we saw that. We saw you raising your face up towards the sky. Right? And why was he doing that? Because Rasul sallallahu knew that now the direction has changed towards Qibla. When, when are we going to get that direction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right? He knew something was going to come at the point. And he was waiting for Jibreel to come down. Right and to deliver that message, he was waiting for that. But again, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is is uh, is uh, referring to that. Now, the other thing is is that Muslims sometimes believe Muslims sometimes believe that we love Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what does that mean? It means, oh, you know, when the name of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is said, we say, you know, we send salam to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, we will cry when his name is mentioned, but we don't really follow all the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us as Muslims, right? And that is what is important is that we need to make sure that we are following all the commandments of Islam, right? Not just saying the durood on Prophet and think that we are great followers, right? Sometimes people think, you know, we are just sending the durood on the Prophet and that will save us on the day of judgment. Don't be amongst those Muslims. Who believe that that you will be saved just because you say through the prophet and if you're not doing all the things that we should be doing we are supposed to be doing okay also remember that you need to love somebody right first right the love the love always comes but the respect has to be there so we need to be start respecting uh, of all the commandments that, that we received Verse 144 continues, Wahi Suma Kuntum, Fawalu Buju Hakum Shatra. Wheresoever you people are, turn your faces in prayer in that direction. Right? So this is now the commandment has come to change your direction. And this is where Muslims started facing towards the Kaaba. Verse 144 continues, Wa inna Lazina Utul Kitaba, Liya Lamuna Anna Hul Hakum Rabbihim, Wama Allahu Bihafilin Anna Yamalun. Indeed, those who have been given the scripture will know that it is true from their Lord. And Allah is not unaware of what they do. Right? So what is being said here is, is that the people of the, the Jews who were the people of scripture, right? They knew what was the truth that came from their Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying is that he is well aware of what they were doing. They used to hide. They used to say this is not the final messenger. Right? The final messenger is yet to come. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to, that he is well aware of what the people used to, what the people of scripture used to say. Verse number 145, Surah Baqarah says, in ma And even if you were to bring the people of scriptures, which is the Jews and the Christians, all the ayahs, which is the proofs, the evidences, the verses, etc., they would not follow your Qibla. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clearly saying that. So today if we believe that, oh, you know, these people are always nice to us, they are friends and all that, it's fine, you need to have the relationship, but know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that you need to be with your nation, right? You need to be friends with the people who are Muslims because you are recognized by the company you keep. If your company is not going to be good, Right? You will ultimately develop the habits of the people who are part of your company. 
nor are you going to follow their qibla and they will not follow each other's qibla right they were not following what each, what each of them were doing so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is again warning us and telling us that the jews and the christians they will not they will not be turning you know changing their qiblas and you should not be changing your qibla either verse 145 continues wala in it tabata ahwaahum verily if you follow their desires hum mim baadi ma ja'aka min al ilm after that which you have received of knowledge from allah right ilm means knowledge innaka idha lamina zalimin then indeed you will be one of the zalimun which means the polytheists or the wrong doers now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying is if you follow your desires what are your desires your desires are oh, you know we knew these people from such a long time right they are not doing certain things and we have to do it because of this new religion why don't we just abandon those things and this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us about is that do not follow your desires do not do right what your desires are telling you to do do what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you to do even right now what some of you are doing is following your desires right you can choose to ignore them or you can choose to follow them and this is what happens in life as well when you go outside this room this is exactly what is going to happen right your desires will tell you to look in one direction right and what i am referring to is is that when you are in high school girls wearing short clothes right that happens right your desires may tell you to look towards that do you follow your desires or not right always remember that you you can tell the other person i'm not doing it but if your eyes are doing it right the karaman katibin they know it and allah knows it so don't try to make a fool of others by telling others oh you know we are such righteous people know that whoever is going to judge you which is allah subhanahu wa taala he knows how righteous you are on the inside whatever you say on the outside doesn't count what's on the inside is what counts right and similarly again this ayah is reminding us is that don't follow your desires otherwise you are not going to benefit verse 146 says allazina atainahum alkitaba ya'rifunahu kama ya'rifuna abna'ahum those to whom we gave the scripture which is the jews and the christians recognize him him being muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as they recognize their own sons right just like your fathers and your mothers know that you are their son similarly the jews knew that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the final messenger in the new it so well still they choose to ignore that right many of them some did believe many choose to ignore that and choose not to follow that so verse number 146 says wa inna fariqan minhum but verily a party of them layf tumun al haqqa conceal the truth wa hum ya'lamun while they know it they were concealing the truth knowing that this is the truth right and we don't want to be amongst those people you will face many situations in your schools and in your life where you will know the truth if you choose to ignore it right you will always have this in your heart that you went with something that was not right you know there are many people today there are many crimes that get committed where somebody tells a lie but their conscience does not allow them to live with that forever in the like some some people come up 5 years later 10 years later saying that this is not what happened that is what happened so similarly never allow your conscience to do things that is not what your heart believes in okay um verse number 147 says al haqq mir rabbik this is the truth from your lord fala takunanna min al mumtarin so be you not one of those who doubt right so remember that we need to understand that the haqq came from allah never doubt that don't think about you know these things are far fetched remember that there were many people in our community who are not with us just a few days ago we don't know how many of us are going to be alive for how long right you have today to do what you can do tomorrow has no guarantee and the past is already gone you cannot change that the only thing that you have is today okay so what we need to remember is 
distance does not ruin a relationship doubts do if you start doubting the message if you start doubting your relationship with your own parents that will start ruining the relationship don't do that okay so what we are going to do is think about what we went through today hopefully some of you or many of you or all of you took notes what we are going to share the next time is in your book at the back of it right if you turn the pages there is there is some notes that we will take now but remember to write down what is your favorite gem for the day okay what resonated with you the most of all that we went through with these few ayas okay and i will be asking you to share that the next time okay so here is our ruku check so write this down in your books do i believe that allah is the owner of the east and the west and this is a question that you need to be answering your own self okay do i ask allah from the core of my heart for guidance because if you don't ask for guidance you are not going to get guidance you only get what you ask for do i display the true qualities of the middle nation am i prepared to face the witnessing of the messenger against me we don't want to be in that situation that the messenger is going to become a witness against us do i doubt even atoms weight about the guidance from allah we need to remember that there we need to get rid of any of our doubts about the quran or the messenger we can say it all we can say with our tongue what matters is do we believe it in our hearts saying it with tongue is one thing believing it in our hearts is is a completely different thing okay all right so remember that allah subhanahu wa taala says in the bounty of allah and in his mercy rejoice okay it is better than what all that they gather okay to so do your best put your trust in allah subhanahu wa taala and have faith ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتوب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته اوكي